We are back with Greenhouse Cabinet 2.0. So this is technically not 2.0, it's a completely new cabinet. The previous one we set up was the Millsbow Tall, this is the Millsbow Wide. And if you saw my video where I was talking about this whole wall and wanting to complete it, the addition of this cabinet is the result. Before setting up my Millsbow Tall cabinet, I did so much research and I thought I was so prepared, but when I actually built it and customized it, I learned so much that I didn't learn anywhere else or from anyone else. I do have an update showing everything I had to troubleshoot and it is still functioning correctly with that last update if you want to check it out. And all that experience makes me feel like this is going to go by much faster. I still want to show you the build and all of that because new issues might come up and I'll want to share those with you and how I'm troubleshooting if I can. I built the actual cabinet off camera and that did go much faster than the first cabinet, but I did the same kind of thing. My husband read me directions and I built it. He did drill the hole for all the cords and I added the grommet and beyond that, nothing else has been done. So I will show you everything I'm going to do. I also don't wanna put a ton of pressure on myself to get it all completed today. I do have this feeling and this thought that it will go much faster and efficiently than my Mills Bow Tall, but I also don't wanna rush myself and if I only get so far today, that's okay I can come back tomorrow and do what's left or completed or you know whatever even though I am anxious to get it done but I just don't want to put that pressure that I had on myself the first time where I was just getting frustrated that it was taking so long and I had to troubleshoot and all of those things I feel like I'm coming from a much more present and Zen space this time also with experience so my goals for this build, very similar to my Mills Bow Tall. I don't want to see any cords. I want it to look beautiful. I want it to have sufficient light for plants to grow and thrive. And I would like it to hold humidity appropriately for a greenhouse space that's going to actually benefit the plants. The order I'm thinking this is going to go in is installing the Modern Aqua Kit, installing lights, installing fans, cord management, and finally weather stripping. Let's get started. Of course I got the Modern Aqua Kit. This is one of my favorite things about the greenhouse cabinets. I just think it enhances the beauty of them so much, not to mention it maximizes space and you can customize so that you can set it up exactly how you want it. So I did go a little bit different than the Millsbow Tall, but why don't I just open it and show you everything that's in here. There's actually a new feature on the shelves that I'm excited to try, and that's what this hardware's for. Also super cute, they always include stickers and decals. So what I got this time is the pegboard kit, two corner shelves, and two hanging shelves. They're like the half width, so it doesn't come all the way to the front of the cabinet, but I think it'll make a little bit more sense once it's actually in there. If I haven't shown you before, this is what it comes like once you remove it from the box and all of the extra packaging to keep it safe. The QR code, if you can see it right here, you can just look that up on your phone and it's gonna give you video directions on how to install each piece, which I feel is super convenient. And then obviously we talked about this last time, but all the pieces come with the protective film that you need to remove. So I'll just unpack all of these. I'll look at the directions real quick and we'll get started installing. These pegboards are installed super easy with a magnet and, whoops, hook. So you just screw on. And this is what this looks like. And then I'll get you up close so you can see how it goes in. This is the pegboard and you know this is my favorite part. Here's our first pegboard, so I'll show you how easy it is to just hang it right in there. These little slots at the very corners is where they're gonna hang on to the magnet clips. And yeah, easy peasy. Thank you. 
Let's do the corner shelves next. You may notice these have additional little pre-drilled screws. They are filled with like a brass screw um, that you can mount lights directly onto here. And I thought it really important to get this new version because if you saw my video with all the troubleshooting I had to do, I had quite a bit of issues with the adhesive in my Mills Tall. So if I can just screw the lights directly onto here, <laughs> Beautiful. As I put in the corner shelves just now, I'm realizing that I was so excited that I got the two foot Barina T5 strip lights for the front corners here and obviously because the corner shelves need to attach to the front corner they are not going to fit but hopefully I have enough of the one foot that I can do here and then on the other side and let's just see how it goes <laughs> up next we have the half shelves this is the setup that I have for now I was feeling a little bit of pressure of I need to decide exactly where the corner shelves are going to go because that's where I am going to be attaching lights. And I was considering moving this one on the right just one notch up. However, I think because this is a lower cabinet and I'm most of the time going to be standing up, it is better to have it lower because I will be able to better see plants lower versus higher, if that makes any sense. So next is attaching lights. I was feeling so good and on such a roll. I'm kicking myself now because I don't have enough of the one foot. <laughs> that was Hunter. I don't have enough of the one foot lights. I'm trying to remind myself, no pressure. I can finish this up tomorrow. I did go ahead and just order more and just the way that I'm currently mapping it in my head, I'm missing two of the one foot lights. But I guess we'll see how it goes. I am going to install what I have now and I'll wait for the other two that I need for tomorrow. I think I'm gonna do the fans first because these should be pretty easy peasy. I decided to go with the two that are attached because I'm just going to place the two at the top and they should be enough to cover the whole cabinet. Now, I did see someone install these a little different so I'm gonna try that and see if it helps with that itty bitty ever so slight noise that I have on the Mills bow. Um, they basically just removed all of these little rubbers from the corners. So it looks like that. And then they used the little magnets to put on each corner. Whoops. So like so, I don't know how well you can see. So they look like that and then just attach them right to the top. So this is what I'm going to try this time. Change of plans. I think I'm going to map the lights first and then I'll add the fans. Just because I did a small trial and they're not very easy to move, the magnets will stay on the roof of the cabinet um, and, you know, I don't know exactly where they're going to go yet, but I do have a better idea of where I want the lights and the fans are kind of going to go in between, so let's move on to the lights. I want to try and avoid adhesive as much as possible, so I'm going to try something different for the lights as well, the ones that are going to go on the roof. So these little things that come with the lights, I am going to place a small little magnet, one of these, underneath. You probably can't see. So there's a little magnet underneath this thing and then I'll place another one on top oh. there we go like that and I'll probably do four and then see if I can get it to better stick that way Again, just trying to avoid adhesive as much as possible.
that seems to be working really really well and there's no extra space added because the magnets are so tiny I wish I would have thought and tried that with my Mills bow when I was having all the adhesive issues but that was so easy peasy okay I'm gonna attach the lights on the shelves on the two corner shelves next and then I'm gonna attach two more lights up here and I'll show you what those are I am going to have to attach those via adhesive I think um, so yeah, so let's keep going. They really thought of everything. There's these little screws that you can also include with your purchase from Modern Aqua, and that these that come from the light, or with the light, you would then screw underneath. So you do need to remove the shelf if you've already removed it, or if you've already attached it, but that's super easy. And then you just line it up. Oops. They ask that you leave it a little loose so that the metal doesn't scratch um, the acrylic, but that's basically it. You just attach the light and voila. And then what I really love is that the surface is completely flush here. So there's nothing that's going to prevent you or make your pot lopsided or anything like that. How cool is that? I added all the Barina lights that are going to go in the cabinet. So there's two, there's like a little separator on the roof of here. There's two two foot back here. There are two one foot on each shelf. And then, you know, I'll add another one foot here on each side. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna add another one foot here, but what I am going to add is the Soltec Grove Light, and it's gonna be two of them, so just one on this side and one on this side. And what I love about this light is, first of all, I've been using Soltec Grow Lights for a long time, the pendants. I have one, two, three, four, five, I have five pendants and the track system with two lights on that and I've just had such great success with those lights. I also love how warm it is and I do love the color of the Barina lights. I think that they're great but I love that these swivel so I can swivel them so that they're giving light to the plant this way so that the plants are facing forward and not up toward the light. I'm really excited about that. Hunter says hello. Okay, so let's open this up and we'll set it up. I think I am going to have to use adhesive to attach this, but let's just see. Oh, this is cute. Ready, set, grow. This light is beautiful. I mean, just like all their other products. Hunter has entered that time of day where he is just needy. This is everything that comes in the box. One, two, cord, and a timer. Oh, something else. It's making noise. Why am I afraid? Oh, this is to mount it and to hold, the, oh, to hold the cord in place. Oh, nice. These are, um, I don't know what they're called. Oh. They're just little cord management situations. And they have adhesive in the back. There's four of them. And then there's something else in this little box. Screws. There's four screws you probably can't see them but just take my word for it there's some screws in there i assume to mount it onto the wall or whatever you were planning to mount it you know i don't like to read directions so i'm going to try to just figure this out myself nope yep okay so this is a magnet that just and it only is compatible with this side of the light. And I assume this other one goes, yep, here. And then we just plug it in here to here. And there you go. So 
I don't know if you can tell, but basically if this is here, the light can swivel. It looks like this comes with adhesive already, but given my experience with the adhesive on the Millsbo cabinet, I think I'm going to use the glue thing that I used there just on top of this film that's already on here just to for maximum security hopefully. In my troubleshooting video for my Mills Boat haul, I used Loctite adhesive that was super, super strong, but it did take 24 hours to cure. My husband talked me into getting a super glue version of Loctite, and it's like Pro Gel, whatever. Just picked this up at Lowe's, and this says to hold in place whatever you're trying to attach for 15 to 30 seconds, so it should be much faster curing time than the one I used previously, and it should still be really strong, hopefully. So that's what I'm gonna use. I'm just going to apply it here, and then attach it actually to this side, but in the inside of uh, the cabinet in here, because it fits perfectly, and again, I think I will be able to face it like downward forward perfectly. So I'm really excited about this. There was absolutely no way that I could show you doing that. So I will add some footage on the screen that I took with my phone of me in there of what those two lights look like in there. They seem pretty sturdy so far, so we'll see. I figure worst case scenario, if for whatever reason that I mean, this is definitely wide enough for it to stick to, but if for whatever reason I'm having trouble there, then I'll just attach them to the roof right on the edge. Now I'm gonna attach the fans, and since there's this like center divider thing, I think I'm just going to do like one on one side in the front and one on the other side in the back. I mapped everything out and everything is plugged into each other the way it's going to go in a unprecedented turn of events. I actually couldn't keep both grow lights on the corner cabinets, so the vertically and then the diagonal one, because there wasn't enough room where the shelf sits on the little, I don't know, holders on the corners and then the plug to go for both lights. So I got rid of the light that was vertical because that was really only going to give light to such a small area in the cabinet anyway. Turns out I do have enough lights to do a vertical for today, so that's good news. I'm going to plug everything in and then see how it looks so I can get an idea and I'll show you. <laughs> I just plugged it in and nothing came on. I'm assuming I need to turn the switches on maybe. The power strip was off. Oh, here we go. <gasps> These Soltec lights are beautiful. The Brina ones aren't on yet. Here's one. I think. No? No, yeah. These two came on and then the rest. I turned everything off so that I can attach the two vertical lights. And I think I'm gonna keep going and cord manage. Plot twist, these do not fit on the corners. So I just did the same thing I did on the Mills Boat Hall and attached the small magnets directly onto the corner spines and then I will attach them to the lights and then attach them together. I just wanna give it a little bit of time. I know it only says 15 to 30 seconds, but they're attached on the spines now and in a few minutes, I'm gonna start getting together for like the cord management thing, then I'll attach this. I got the same cord covers I used for the Mills Boat Hall, except we are not even going to attempt to use their adhesive. I'm just going to use this um, crazy glue adhesive from Loctite I've been using for other things. So yeah, um, I will probably speed through this. If there's anything significant that I know, I'll come on and let you know.
have these left and I'm worried I might run out. I still need to do the center, this top, little piece at the bottom over here, the front corners, and then all around to where the cords are gonna go. So I may need to order more. I'm gonna switch gears for a minute and attach the magnets onto the vertical lights to see if I can actually really finish all of the cord management today. managed but I did run out of the cord covers so all of this bottom still needs them and then I need to figure out what to do with this because it's so thick to fold how I initially thought so I'm thinking I'm going to run another cord cover here and then I can hide it behind this little I don't know uh, brace or whatever that's on the roof but this is where I am I will be back when the cord covers arrive. I'm back. It's the next day, Monday, March 11th, and the cord covers arrived. These qualified for like Amazon's overnight delivery, so they were delivered at my doorstep by 6 a.m. today, which is great because I can finish the cabinet, start using it, and close that tab in my head. I'm just gonna keep going through it. Again, if anything significant comes on, I'll pop on and show you what it is and how I'm troubleshooting if I can. And then once it's all done according to me and how I want it to look, I will walk you through everything and how everything is connected to each other and what I covered and everything. I still have to weather strip but otherwise it's done all cord manage all the lights the fans everything is where it's supposed to be and plugged in and good to go I will show you a close-up of everything that I placed where I placed it and why if pertinent I turned everything off for filming purposes but this is what it looks like at first glance 
And now let me show you close-ups. I am going to manage all of that situation, but later. Okay, so starting at the top, I have two Barina two-foot lights, and those are daisy chained to each other. I have one fan. There's this like divider thing that I'm assuming is for support um, just on the roof of the shelf. So I have one fan in the back left and then another fan on the right front. And then I have the Soltec Grove lights here, which I love. I wish I could afford to just get two more of these and they would replace the Barinas for sure. So we have the cord management here. This is for the Barina, I'm sorry, this is for the Soltec lights and then the um, extension cord for the USB fans and it just runs all the way down. This was a piece that I was going around with placing here in the corner but I don't know that I'm gonna keep it there or not. You saw me adding some of this clear tape that comes with the cord covers just for the seams. I think it does the trick. I don't love this, but that's the length of it and that's the best that I could do. And then they all connect to here. Go back to the center. There's not much going on until here, so like the middle. And that's this vert or that's uh, this diagonal light that comes down and plugs into this diagonal light. And then there's the power cord that comes down the center and that's what this is and goes in there. On the right hand side, again, this is for the Grove lights. So it just comes all the way down, easy peasy, right in the center. And then we have this Barina light. I have it, it just comes through the top and connects to this vertical Barina. And then this comes down the power here onto the grommet. And this side, same thing. So this roof Barina connects to this vertical one and there's no uh, nothing else here because this is powered by the right hand side. This is really hard to see, but these are the Grove lights right in here. And first of all, their color is beautiful, but I love that they rotate. So again, I can give them that kind of like front sort of um, like top front light so that they can face out and yeah and this is what it looks like with everything on one two and it just looks really beautiful just really quick I want to show you I don't even know the camera is going to translate but this is just the Grove lights on and the color is so beautiful. Not to mention it doesn't pick up that weird striping that the Barinas do. Um, it's just, it's such a beautiful warm white. One more look, everything on. The finish line is near and I am so excited. I was so intimidated to tackle weather stripping on my Mills Boat haul, but it was one of the easiest things I did for that customization. So this should go by pretty quickly. I'm going to be using the same kind of flappy kind for the door where the doors meet. And then I'll use the rubber foam for around all the edges. So I'll show you once it's done.
She's already finally the fun part, adding some plants. Initially, I thought I was gonna have alocasias and hoyas in here, but since I have been getting a lot of new anthuriums lately, this is for sure gonna be more like alocasia anthurium, which I think is actually perfect because neither of them like to dry out and they like more humidity. And so I just think that hopefully it's just this really perfect environment for them to thrive. I'm gonna add some plants in there, I'll show you what that looks like, and then at the end I'll give you any sort of like last tips or like new things I learned or you know just comparing things that were easier this time around versus the Mills bow, anything like that. In functioning these are all the plants that I have for now as you can see there's plenty of room which is exactly how I get myself in trouble so I'm like oh I can just put it in the cabinet next thing I know I have too many plants again but I love it you know already I love the modern aqua kits I really love how customizable they are and in my opinion they just really complete the cabinet it almost shimmers so of course I still have to manage these bottom cords and I do have a cord situation to sort everything in just like I did on my Mills Bow Tall I'll probably just do that off camera I can show you the final result once I'm done with it like at the end of this video it's pretty boring and not much to it eventually as I settle more into the cabinet I do want to get matching pots like I did on my Mills Bow Tall. I think having the clear and like a mixture of clear and white is pretty. I even like the way that it looks now with what I have going on, but you know, just as I settle in, I'm sure changes will happen and I'm sure it'll get much more full. So I'll move on to kind of my final thoughts and then I also asked my Instagram what details they wanted to know about a greenhouse cabinet build, some things that I may have missed with my Mills Bow Tall. So I'll address those things as well in general this went by much faster and smoother it still did take me probably a good four hours yesterday and then another two hours today but honestly it's only because I've done it before and then I was just really specific with how I wanted things to be like cord management and where I wanted to place lights so I played around with the setup and how things were gonna be plugged into each other a little bit just to really maximize cord management the best I possibly could. You already know I didn't bother with any peel and stick adhesive. I used that Loctite crazy glue stuff and everything seems to be holding up and I'm mentioning it even though it's only been a day because immediately within two hours the peel and stick of the cord covers on my Mills Bow Tall was coming apart. So I guess so far so good. Cord management again is what took the absolute longest and then I ran out of cord covers as you saw. I don't remember needing to use two sets of the cord covers for the Mills Bow Tall, but maybe I did. I also just had a lot left over from that second set, so I just, I can't remember, but for my setup, I needed two sets, one set wasn't enough. Something else I didn't remember about the cord covers for my Mills Bow Tall is that the Barina extenders are a lot thicker and really you can only fit one and the USB itty bitty skinny one in those covers, nothing else. So like if I had one of these and then one of the Barina regular plugs um, like this, these would not fit in those small covers. You saw that I opted for the two fans that were already attached to each other. I'm gonna say I wouldn't recommend that unless you're placing them directly next to each other. I mean, obviously there could be some space, but because I kind of have them like this, it was a little bit just kind of a pain to manage that really short cord between the fans. 
Um, so I wouldn't recommend it for this kind of setup I have it on. I wish I just had two separate fans so that I could place and then send their cords accordingly, but it's not that big of a deal. And on that note, I'll say that this Mills Bow Wide allows for a lot better cord management and hiding cords on the roof of the cabinet because of that center brace, which is always good. On the subject of fans, someone asked, fan placement, how many are you needing and where should they go? I'm doing a Rudsta wide. For fans, I am only using two at the top, again, kind of like this, so that one covers one half of the cabinet and the other the other half of the cabinet, but it really just all depends on what your setup is like, what shelves are you using. The modern aqua shelves have the little vents, like the slits all over them, so that air can circulate like through the whole cabinet between the shelves. If you're using the glass shelves, then I would recommend to have a fan on each level. And basically, you just wanna place the fans in an air where they will provide airflow for the plants. If you can see the leaves of the plants gently moving, then that's all it is. Kind of in the same subject, someone said, can't wait for the new video, humidifier or no humidifier, alocasia and anthurium cabinet. Oh, very similar to mine. In my opinion, no humidifier. I feel that humidifier can bring a lot more issues than benefits, in my opinion. If you keep your plants well hydrated and already the warmer temperatures with the light and the fan circulating, it should be a perfect amount of humidity and you'll also be able to track when plants are getting thirsty. Having a humidifier with likely plants touching each other, such a warm environment, it just can invite a lot of unpleasantness, fungal infections, rust in your cabinet, etc. I just I feel like the amount of fans you would need to have if you are running a humidifier there that's keeping humidity at the 70-80% is just I don't for me it's just not worth it. I think that if you want to increase humidity, there's other things that you can do. You can add more plants, add a leca tray, add a plant with a moss pole in there because that really helps keep the cabinet a little bit more on the humid side. You saw me in the beginning attach the fans and the two top arena lights with the magnets and the little hooks. I actually changed it and I added just the bigger magnets to the fan in the center just like I did on my Mills Bow Tall because I didn't notice any benefit on like less noise the way that I had done them before. And I was also having the issue of when I was trying to take the fan off just to adjust things or whatnot, the magnets were staying up there and they were just kind of a pain in the butt to remove. So I went ahead with my original setup. And on the lights, I attached the magnets to the lights with the adhesive and also attach them to the roof, just like I did on my Mills Botal, because again, when I was removing them to move the lights and you know help with corn management and whatnot, the little magnets were staying stuck up there and it just, that was annoying. I've had really good experience with the Loctite adhesive. Nothing's come flying off on my Mills Bow Tall anymore. So I just wanted something that was a little bit more secure and should I want to move those around or switch them or remove for whatever reason, I didn't wanna make that process any more tedious or difficult. And then someone asked, how did you decide what plants and where they will go? For me, it's really about aesthetics, right? But I also kind of have favorite plants that I want to try and provide the bestest environment that I can, which would be a very stable environment like that of a greenhouse. And recently I've been on like serious plant shopping trans. <laughs> so I had an idea of like, I want these plants in a cabinet. They all happen to be alocasias and I had a few Hoya in mind, but as things went on, I've obviously acquired a number of anthuriums and I am quite keen on getting these growing and thriving and really happy. So it kind of shifted to anthuriums and alocasias. But in general, those favorite plants that I'm picking for my greenhouse cabinets are those that love a consistent environment, would appreciate warmer temperatures, higher humidity, and just great light. I think this is it for now. Please let me know if you have any questions or anything else you'd like me to elaborate on. I'd be happy to do so. I will show you a shot of this completed wall, the wall of my dreams, once I'm done talking. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. I hope I'll see you soon in the next video. And I'll chat with you down below.